All right, guys, we're back. We got work. Always got work to do, right? Bounty. Yeah, yeah. Said we were gonna do this one, right? Cause we're just doing all of them, so why not? Let's go. Accept a request to eliminate Black Hood. If troubling area, apparently the Bruder defeated a number of most nice and bounty hunters. No. Why do I feel like I've done this one? I know it's a bounty for scoundrels and everything, but I feel like I feel like in the last episode we did this exact quest. Like we did this exact same thing. Hmm. That's weird. Only you could have. Uh, I'm telling you, this is some some deja vu going on right here. I mean, it is a different person. It wasn't. It wasn't a chick. It was. Uh, Big dude in red, maybe? No! He had a mask on, he wore a green. It's a white mask. He wore green. Right? Some deja vu up in here. I'm so confused. Oh no! She. Oh gosh. Please don't kill me. It killed me, guys. The soul of a warrior now is here to rest. Great way. Great way to start the video. Real confident now. And going forward, I'm just... <clears throat> yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> uh, doesn't matter if I lose, I still talk like that. My soul is uh, so gouge, hey, whatever. I need to choke faster. Oh, come on, get off of me. This is non consensual. There you go. What the hell? She's lost all her clothes. She was wearing a dress and a mask and the whole nine yards. Now she's wearing a tank top and pants. What the hell? I did something we done in this fight. <laughs> I don't remember nothing. What the hell did that happen? Horn of destruction. New weapon. It's a pipe. See, I thought it was weapon stuff. It's like materials. I need to go find out what I can do with that. I, I vaguely remember a chick. Wasn't she the blacksmith? I think she was the blacksmith. She did something with weapons. <laughs> oh boy. I'm so good at video games. Let's do another bounty. You already know the deal, guys. Black guard causing trouble. Let's go kick him in the face. Nobody else could take him down. The only one who could do it. Keep telling me this. My price is going to go up. I'm telling you what. Supply and demand. It can't be just... I know, being the only one out here really able to do this, apparently, not even willing, because apparently they're just beating the crap out of everybody else. I can't be the only one out here able to do this, you know, and not getting paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, I gotta make a living too. And, I'm just saying, this. There's, there's a lot of black cards running around causing all this trouble. There's only one of me, sadly. You know, <laughs> there was like four of me. Think about that, that'd be crazy. I got so much accomplished. <laughs> Gosh dang. Dude, you blocked so much your guard's almost broken. That hasn't even been that long. I haven't even talked about you this entire time. I've been mumbling and rambling about other random crap. My gosh, you must be a pathetic opponent. Think about how sad that would be. You fighting somebody, they rambling about something not even like related to you, not paying attention at all, and still destroying you. That's just That's like humiliating. <laughs> uh cut him up, Cody. It this man lost his shirt. And his headband at that, I'm pretty sure. 
What the heck? My special move is apparently taking off people's tops. That's a little... Uh. <laughs> calm down. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. It's okay. <laughs> Primitive cudgel. 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 Weird English. Don't like it. It's better than what I got, though. That... That's what... Oh, holy crap, all those quests down in the middle of nowhere. Calm down. I visited the ruins of an old poet town in pursuit of a rumor about the evil seed. There, I found a man who had saved me once before. Is that Southside Mail? No bonuses. Can I? I know I can put bonuses on. How do I do? Do I have to go somewhere? I think I have to go. Gosh dang it. To the, uh. Well, some sort of blacksmith, I suppose. <laughs> the rumors were true. The port was abandoned and no signs of life could be seen among the empty shells of buildings in the ruined docks. Something drew me to search the desolate streets. I walked for several minutes until I reached an open area, and standing there was Zazamel. I should have known you would appear. I take it the rumors about the cursed sword and the evil seed had reached you. Very well, we shall speak. But first... Zesamel lifted his hand, gesturing to the ruins around us, where before I see nothing, I now notice twisted creatures skulking in the shadows, the color of the skin, the movements. They were certainly not human, but ghastly cries, they raised their weapons and shambled towards us. Those beings are bound here by the evil that corrupts this place. They feed on the souls of those drawn here by rumors, and raise their fallen victims as new members of their foul horde. Says I'm out, man, you gotta keep the same voice. What the hell are you doing? And now they wish to feed on you. Says I'm out over here playing voice games with us. What the heck? You're trying to make us think we don't recognize him as if the giant yellow eyeball in his head didn't give him away. <laughs> what the hell? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <sighs> the hell am I doing? Let's go! Come on, just because I can ramble on, don't mean you gotta take forever. Oh, they absorb my bunch of wannabe vampires? Get out of here. Oh crap. Hey. My gosh. This. Cease death activity. What I tell you? This, this is episode is about taking off people's tops. That man just lost his top. My goodness. Oh, oh, there we go, guys. This guy don't even got a top for you to take off. There you go. Can't take off your top if you don't got one. Unless I, unless I flay him. I don't think this game allows that. You know what it does, though, guys. But, oh, maybe. Maybe. Mortal Kombat. Left. It just came out. I have it. I don't know when I'm going to get to, to play it make a video on it. I uh, don't think my mates have it yet, so... I don't know. But, just heads up. That should be coming soon. Along with the rainbow that, that uh, you know, it's supposed to be coming for quite a while now. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. I'm trying to streamline. So, Calvin, obviously, to get this done with. Because it's been going on for too long. I'm trying to get my mates on. That's the... It's becoming a problem. <laughs> Once I destroyed the twisted creature hunting me, Sazamel began to speak as though nothing had happened. Around 30 years ago, the cursed sword slept in this very place. This was also the pirate Cervantes' base of operations, once he came into possession of the sword. But Cervantes' days were numbered. The, blaze were, the blade was shattered by a Grecian warrior blessed by the gods, Sophidia. Unbeknownst to her, she had only destroyed half of the cursed sword. How? Because with Cervantes as its owner, the sword had become one of a pair. Soul Edge transforms itself to fit the character of the one who wields it. Cervantes used a pair of swords in battle, and the cursed sword happily split the two to better serve him. That changed the very destiny of the sword. The desolate port town, poisoned by the sword's influence, gives Azamel's words an extra weight. 
Where we stand now, in this very spot, the young swordsman Siegfried claimed the remaining sword. When he did, the evil seed sprang forth. It is as yet unclear what created the evil seed, and why some, such as you, were affected. It is clear, however, that the fates of many were changed, resulting in the world as we know it. Fate deals its hand without prejudice. Sazamil's voice slowly quieted until at last he was silent. After a few moments of contemplation, he looked up at me. Enough talking. There is nothing here for you now. Nothing that will change your fate. Alright, Mr. Zazamel. <laughs> what was Zazamel doing there? I had no idea. Perhaps like me, he faced an inescapable fate. Oh? Are we about to go diving into Mr. Zazamel? Hot personal life now? Are we about to be Snoop Dogg? Or snooping all up in his all up in his junk. <laughs> what the hell? All right, we got what? One, two, only two, only only two. Goodness gracious! Then I gotta see about uh the blacksmith. <laughs> While searching for information on the cursed sword, the name of a mansion in the British Empire came up time and again. Perhaps I could find some clues there. With that in mind, I set off. I heard of rumors of a place in the British Empire that might have something to do with the cursed sword. When I arrived, I found a ruined mansion. Out of courtesy, I knocked before entering the seemingly abandoned building. Inside, I found old portraits on the wall and furniture covered in dust. When I reached the central courtyard, I heard footsteps. What do we have here? A guest? It has been ever so long. Are you a friend of Lord Valentine? May I inquire as to your name? The man spoke politely, but he had a dangerous air about him. I gave my name, careful not to take my eyes off of him. Oh, how surprisingly candid of you. My name is Fiddler. Since you've come on this way, I feel I should tell you a bit about the place. This was once the estate of a renowned merchant and noble, Lord Valentine. See that crest? It once adorned the prows of merchant galleons and hoes from London to Venice and the world beyond. He was brilliant, but sadly, grew erratic. Not long after, he began his research into the alchemic arts. His wits faded as his obsession for something called solage grew. He squandered his fortune and died of sickness along with his beloved wife, and now, We'll see for yourself what has become of his legacy. He had an exceptionally beautiful young daughter, but no one knows what became of her. Some say his madness transformed itself into his daughter's curse. <laughs> anyway, I believe I've amused myself enough for today. Mister, be a dear and help me flank this fool. I glanced over my shoulder and was shocked to see a woman dressed in eastern garb standing right behind me. It looks like this fiddler had been buying time until his partner showed up. You're as cowardly as ever, Fiddler, which you were wise to wait for me. You see, friend, this is our, uh, uh, what do you call it? Secret base? Yes, that sounds right. Now that you've seen us, we simply can't let you leave alive. You face number eight, Fiddler, the Butcher now. I'm known as number five, the Breaker. Let's do this. I'm facing off with some crazy people got code names and numbers which you know that's five and eight that means there's at least six seven one two three four gosh damn it I don't remember no code name people before with numbers that means I probably got all of them to go through my gosh you know you know there's probably a nine and a ten let's get real <sighs> it's too much work Taking out an entire group of random weirdos with number names. You think that's something cool? I ain't never heard of these. Hi. Get the hell up off me. I ain't dealing with this no more. We ain't playing game. Oh my. Guess what? His top came up. Oh my goodness. Uh. <laughs> Oops. I wasn't supposed to be loud. My voice cracked. 
Yeah, that was definitely loud. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh my gosh, I have so much low health. Why is that? No. She stabbed me. She stabbed me in the family jewels, okay? You can't blame me for what happened right there. That's not something a man can deal with. Okay, what, what, what who you are? If you if you a man, you you are not getting dealt with when you get stabbed in the family jewels. What you not dealing with? Yep. Listen, you know what I meant to say. <laughs> My English not be good, I promise. Man. You ask what now? You just lost your shirt. No, no. No, I lost my shirt. The soul of a warrior now lays here to rest. This ever happened to anybody else, huh? You just get in a rut, you know, and you can't play the game all of a sudden. Yeah. Let me just yeah. Go. You know, we were making such good headway, you know, just plow, plowing through progress. And then this happens. Shut your mouth, you radiant fool. What are you doing? Golden scum! Oh, and look, <laughs> there goes his shirt. Went out with a with a crack. That kind of abnormal. I don't know if y'all heard that. that. That was weird. Something like it just broke like pottery. No, not not even pottery. Maybe like origami. Really hard origami. <laughs> No. She hits faster than me. It's not fair. It's completely fair. What am I talking about? This is war. I'm getting about to out of here and that. You know what? Let me wake up. That's the first step. <laughs> No more making videos while I'm asleep, apparently. No, were you matched? Can you beat me? Oh my gosh, they're just faster than me. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just pointing it out though. That it is a 2v1, and they are double teaming the. Piece of Okay, can I not hit this man? I can't hit this man. What <laughs> Okay, we this this has to be the moment because we gotta get this other quest done. Hopefully both of them, that was the goal, you know. Don't you stab me with your gosh dang pixie dust ever again. Okay? We're just... We're tired of you. Alright? Gosh! These gosh damn living think they can just trample all over us. That... That's not what we be about right here. That sounds like... 
would that be racist? Is, is dead people a race? Would be pre uh, definitely prejudice. I tell you what, you you prejudiced living people. How dare you? <laughs> oh goodness. I really have no idea what I'm saying. Ninety-nine percent of the time. <laughs> Not bad. I'm impressed you could hold your own against both of us. Though I had managed to hold off the attacks thus far, that these two were incredibly skilled fighters. I was considering just how to make my escape when a shout rang out from somewhere in the house. Hey, stop playing around, you idiots! Number three is almost back. A large man wielding a giant sword appeared in a window at the top of the mansion. Next to him stood a crafty-looking old man with a monocle. Important to note. If Shylock comes back and sees us held off by this peon, he'll kill us for sure. Bilk, Greed, lend us a hand here if you please. There's no way I'd survive if my opponent's numbers grew further. I made a split second decision and bolted for the exit. I did what? How long I ran, I don't know. It didn't appear that I was being pursued, but I thought it wise to not stop until I was far, far away. I don't know who those people were in the mansion. But they were too good to be mere thieves or bandits. And now that they knew my face and my name, it would be in my best interest to never go near that place again. Game. I didn't ever agree to being a coward. Take me back right now! I don't mind! <laughs> Gosh damn it. Let's go take off the sorcerer. steps the sorcerer. I arrived at the tavern long after the sun had set. The place was loud and lively. A table of tipsy young folk playing cards. A wizened old lady nursed a mug. A barmaid giggled with a customer. But what caught my eye was a well-built fellow at the end of the counter. Drinking silently, he surveyed the room, an occasional smile forming on his lips. I made my way through the throngs of people to the counter. While I was waiting for my drink, the man slipped up to me and began to speak. Evening. You're a different shirt, aren't you? It seemed that the man had noticed me too. I asked him what he meant by a, a different sort, and he smiled. Mob is watching people, you see. So I get a kick out of finding people like so who are a little well. Unusual, shall we say. I pulled back, not wanting to get involved with this shitty character, but he carried on talking regardless. I met me in a different sort the other day. I white a fellow with a strange golden eyes. He was covered in scars, so I thought it might have been a rough sort, but turns out he was some bad folk. And he in the natter with two, said he was looking for a sorcerer. He wanted to know if I knew who had been in that short, but well, I just told him about the old lady across the river. The one who knows things too about medicine, you know, the witch of the oak. When he came back the next day, he wasn't happy. He said, damn it, don't need some old hag who can lance a boil. Need someone who can open a gate. I know someone who can. Tell me where to find them now. <laughs> the cheek on this one. Apparently the white-haired man just shrugged and left when he found no answers. So you know what, as a person of a different sort of shit, what do you think that guy's deal was? Well, he's, he's from a world of magic, I tell you that. That boy jumped out and thought magic was normal. <laughs> I like the way you think. Besides, I could see it. Certainly was funny enough, that one. Whatever he was, he looked real serious, like he never had a laugh in his life. <laughs> the man seemed to suddenly remember something and pointed to the table of card players. He told me they had card games where he's from too, asked me what sort of rules we play by here. Boy, was she ever clever. Picked the game up in seconds, cleaned me out of a twinkling too. It was really like magic. <laughs> The man continued to talk for hours, flitting from topic to topic, with seemingly no intention of stopping. Whew. Oh boy. Just trash talking get a little. No, no big deal. <laughs> Alright, um. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, we. Nah, that's gonna be the end. Cause for a little expedition. Next time we're gonna. Well, first we gotta find out what village the blacksmith is in. We'll go to. Mashad, apparently. There's a quest in Mashad. Go to Summercon, go to Cash Go. You get the deal. I'm gonna go all over the place, picking up the dust, you know, here and there. See what's up. <laughs> and I'll see y'all then.